Hello, I'm Matthew DeLong, and I'm going to be showing you how to use heavyweight callbacks with Datasnap. This video is part one, which will deal with thick clients, and then you can watch part two, which will show you how to use the heavyweight callbacks with thin clients using REST and a web browser. So the first thing I will do is I'll create a new Datasnap server project, leaving the defaults from the wizard, except I'll remove serve methods class. You don't need to make any changes on the server container. It's got the server and the transport. And the default port 211 is fine, so I'll go to the unit. And I'll add a memo. And what this will do is the client will be listening for updated up, uh, updates to the memo on the server, and the client will be notified as that happens. I'll clear the lines. And now I'm going to add an event handler for when this is modified. Since callbacks deal with JSON, I need to add dbxjson to the users clause. And because I need the server to call the broadcast, I will also add the server container unit one. So now for implementing the event handler when you, the memo is updated. Create a JSON string which will wrap the value currently in the memo. And now I'll get to the server and the broadcast message. And for here, I'll just put memo channel as the name. Uh, it can be anything, it's just the clients need to know what it is. And value is the current string value of the memo box. And that's all we need for the server. So I'll go here, name it something useful. and save it. Make sure that builds. And now I'll add the client. I'll make it a VCL forms application. And I'll add a memo. And I'll add two buttons, one for starting the callback and one for stopping the callback. So I'll label these appropriately. And I'll clear the lines here. and I need to add a SQL connection. So to set it up for the server, set the driver to data snap, leave TCP IP as the protocol, and leave port to 11, and we don't need login prompt. Now we'll implement the start and stop. First I'll go back to the form, and I forgot to add a uh, Callback Channel Manager. We need to fill this out appropriately. So channel name needs to match the one on the server, memo channel. Communication protocol, uh, specify TCP IP. The port is 211. It's got a manager ID for you there. I'll change the name to something shorter. Channel Manager. And host, local host. The server will be running locally, and that's all we need for that. Now I'll go back to the start button and implement that. Just 
do some initialization. Check to see if it's connected. If it's not, then set it to true. Open the connection. And set a callback ID. This is going to be the callback that the client registers that just needs to have unique ID, so I'll make a field for it. And now I'll just do the button enablement. So button 1 is the start button, and I'll disable that, and button 2 is the stop button. And I'll enable that so you can stop it once it's been started. And I'll register the callback with the ID, and I need to create a class. I'll call it tmemo callback. So I'll create that up here. the callback. So make the function execute Implement it. Don't need anything from constructor actually, so just do this. So, what we want to do is first set the result to a new instance of TJS and true tell the server that we are notified. And for this demo, it's going to be a TJS and string. Now we'll strip the string from the JSON string. And now we have the new content of the memo field on the server. We want to set that in to the client's memo. We'll do that on the UI thread. Now we'll implement stop, which will change the button enablement. And unregister. Client project. There's some errors. That should actually be callback ID. Try this again. 
and now we should be able to run the server and the client. And now you see if I'm typing, you don't see anything. Hit start. Now you see whenever the value changes on the server, it is updated on the client instantaneously. If I hit stop and type something, it's not updated. If I hit start again, it's updated again. And that's it for part one of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope it helps. and. Please watch part two if you want to see how to do this with thin clients.